Thank you very much for special introduction to me. Um, my name is Chiaki Sato. I'm an assistant professor at the Graduate School of Public Policy at the University of Tokyo, and that I'm a visiting scholar at the Brookings Institutions. Uh, I'm very honored to come here after finishing the, the first sessions between the, the University of College Dublin and the University of Tokyo. The, thanks to the Dr. Kodate's special support, we safely finished the first session, and now I'm coming here for having the presentations on medical innovation by investing in health. So today's topic is the medical innovation. So probably that uh, many people think that, that uh, medical innovation means that uh, some medical products developed after the de uh, research and development at the companies. But uh, today, sure, I will mention about such kind of the medical product development, but also that the systemic more approach that we call the accountable care that, that is targeting on the, the outcome-based development of the healthcare systems. So today, this is the table of content for my presentations. The first is that Japan's healthcare is facing a big town. That means that uh, due to the aging and that uh, more demand on the uh, medical technologies that we are facing on the uh, increase that the uh, healthcare expenditures. So this is uh, probably the uh, unexpected situation where the Ministry of Finance is very afraid of the, the, our futures. The second is that the trend for value and outcome gradually became clear in health skills. Third is, this is the medical product development part. And uh, I want to mention about that uh, some risks to advance that uh, our products, if we deregulate and deregulate and that, uh, how can I say, privatize that the healthcare systems in Japan. So fourth is the transforming the healthcare system toward accountable care. So this is how to change the healthcare systems for more the outcome oriented arenas. So the, before the conclusion that I want to mention about the trend for the investing in health among EU, US, and Japan. And uh, I am a little bit uh, the scared of my presentation, so that I forgot to mention about the, about the Ireland interest. The, Ireland is that uh, my special country because that, uh, my favorite singers came from Ireland. One is the Enya, the other one is the Dear Chorus. So that uh, I'm very happy to come here. This is the second time. So first presentation seed is that uh, Japan's healthcare is facing a big term. The, you can see that the gradual increase of the healthcare expenditures and that the GDP ratios is also the increase. Previously, the eight percent, but the now that the nine and ten percent, nearly, and that the Ministry of Finance is very concerned about that the annually that the one trillion Japanese yen, so that the U.S. ten billion dollars increased for recent several years, and that the Ministry of Finance could not find out how to moderate such kind of the increase. There is no way. There has been no way. And that the, now that the Ministry of Finance thinks, not Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare, not specialist, but the, thinks that the, due to the aging, super aging society and the medical technology development are the two main cores. And the, which is the main target for cutting the healthcare expenditures for the Ministry of Finance? Can you imagine the situation? It's a natural answer. Sure, medical technologies. We cannot penalties. We cannot make penalties for being aged. Sure, this is a destination for us to have aged and aged. So the Ministry of Finance is thinking to make a cap for the pricing to the, the medical pro new medical products. This is very uh, concerned situations for the uh, manufacturers, pharmaceutical and medical device companies. And that the third point is also that the very 
challenging situation for Japan that by 2030s, 33% population will be over 65 years old, and that the 20% people over the 75 years old. This is that probably the, uh, the unexpected in the world, over and over the aged people live longer. And uh, this is just slide for the giving you that uh, some cost about the uh, caring that the uh, elderly peoples in the later stage of the life. So now the Japanese people are concerned about how to moderate the increased healthcare expenditures. Now, as I said to you that this slide is about the end of life cares for the elderly, but the Ministry of Finance is targeting on not aging peoples, but the medical technology advancement. And uh, as you know, we can see the trend for value and outcome from that the volumes. Previously, that uh, we were thinking to to provide access of the medical care is the first, and uh, we were we have been thinking to balance access cost qualities, but uh, now the trend is a little bit changing, not only for just assuring that uh, getting that. Uh, services or the therapies, but the outcomes, better outcomes, better qualities are more important. So there are the components of the trend. First is the fee from the fee for service to some pay for performance. This is very difficult to change the fee for service schemes. Even in United States, that the fee for service is the main. But uh, now that the accountable care organizations introduced that uh, some part of the pay for performance schemes. And uh, in Japan, that uh, we faced that uh, special difficulties to introduce the pay for performance. Because yeah, I don't criticize the Dr. Ushiro, but uh, uh, physicians think that uh, they are all same. Or that they please don't uh, the, think that some physicians are very low quality. So it's very difficult. The second part is not the physician side, but the product side. That we are now thinking to introduce that the health technology assessment. Our previous presenters, Professor Jean, uh, mentioned about the health technology assessment, but uh, it is like a cost effective uh, check that the product uh, risk and benefit and uh, what is a good product for the covered services under the national healthcare insurance. So third part is that the value-based purchasing and procurement and that the group purchasing. So that the hospital group thinks that uh, what kind of the product is good for purchasing compared with the other products. That is also that uh, value-based approach. And the fourth part is that the hospital data comparisons. Uh, previously in Japan that the we hated to compare the hospitals and the clinics in light of the qualities. But the situation is gradually changing. The Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare started the discussion how to give the information to the public on the quality data about the hospital and the clinics. The last one is that the introducing health indicators. This is a new topic so that I will talk after the slides. And uh, this part is that uh, advanced technology for added value in healthcare. So now we are seeing in Japan that the deregulation and that the privatization for new products. I mean that that the Japanese government is thinking to speed up you know, that the approval you know, of the new medical products, pharmaceutical, medical devices, and the regenerative medical products. But uh, it's not co-linked with that uh, it will be covered under the national healthcare insurance. So it means that sometimes that uh, the government say that it's broaden 
the patient options to get access to the, the new technologies or the new therapies. But sometimes it means that the out-of-pocket payment will be bigger. So we should be concerned about a little bit that uh, more options is not uh, every time good. But uh, the component is very interesting. The recently the Japan established the Japan NIH, the research foundation distributions institutions. So it became clear that Japanese government make more money for the, the research fund to the, the medical new medical products, new therapies. And that, as I said to you, that more speedy approvals have been introduced. And the third one is, I, I mentioned before. And that the monetary incentives is very important for uh, make realize the medical innovation in light of the medical products and the new therapies. But uh, in Japan, it's a very interesting. There is a big differences between the, the new procedures and the, the new medical products. New medical pro products that uh, value-based pricing schemes could be introduced in the near futures. But the, as to the medical procedures, we cannot see such kind of the situation soon. So that uh, there is a big differences. Sure that uh, physicians have a powers to negotiate with to keep that uh, status quo now. So it's a very interesting topic. And uh, the last part is the new problems in advancing the medical technologies. Sure, if we speed up that the approvals, the, we must expect that uh, more adverse events we didn't expect it. We didn't expect and that the uh, some litigation risks. Litigation risks in Japan not only means that the physicians liabilities, but also sometimes very rare case, but the uh, governmental staffs liabilities. I mean that if the, the governmental staffs uh, the faultly approved the product and uh, with some adverse event and died many people, there could be a litigations against that the governmental staff. So we must be careful about it. Sure that the second part is that the financial protection for the patient. The Dr. Ushiro mentions that the, we allowed that the free access to that the eco cares for the every people. But after the introducing that the deregulated and the out of pocket types of that the new therapies that uh, we must be careful about the uh, protection of the patients in financial situations. And that the uh, third is that uh, increase in the healthcare expenditures. If we m more cover new therapies under the new national healthcare insurance, that is a reverse side. And uh, this is just example of that, uh, how to speed up that uh, cover the new therapies that the Japanese government published that the plans to reduce that the reviewing time by cutting that some discussions. So I hope that even if that the reviewing time is reduced, that the uh, risk and the benefit approach must be not differentiated. And uh, this is that the examples of that uh, uncovered services prices before approvals. So some therapies is a little bit other expensive, the six, number six. And that the right side is that the specific examples of that the qualified advanced therapies, advanced therapies which, is, which are not covered under the national healthcare insurance. And uh, this slide is that uh, transforming healthcare system toward accountable cares. So as I said to you again and again, innovation should include not only the technologies, but delivery schemes. That uh, now we are understanding 
If we balance the cost and cost and access and qualities, we must be careful about the delivery schemes. And that the, as the bookings that the, we are interested in that the targeted populations and outcome goals and uh, indicators and the incentive payment and uh, sure delivery schemes. This is uh, the component of the accountable cares for more outcome-based healthcare <coughs> systems. And uh, on the first slide that Japanese people now is very, very concerned about the increase of the healthcare expenditures. But the expenditures must be talked with the qualities. Why we must concern, uh, sorry, uh, wh why we, we must consider seriously just annual increase of the one trillion yen or the 10 billion US dollars? We must balance that uh, quality and that uh, healthcare expenditures as well. And sure, the technology itself cannot assure health improvement. <coughs> so that uh, we must be carefully deals with that uh, systemic approach in addition to that uh, medical product development. But uh, if we promote the accountable cares in Japan and other countries, we will face, definitely face, that there are some hurdles. This is a component of the hurdles. First is sure, the physician's incentives. Physician is very, very sensitive to their incentives so that uh, we must care about the physician side. And next is that the pro professional coordinations, not only that the physician and nurses, other medical professions uh, should be considered about changing the healthcare systems. And sure, setting outcome goals and quality indicators, this is also harsh discussions everywhere, not only in the United States and in Japan too. And uh, Fourth point is, I think, the most important, linking added quality with add-on payment. The Dr. Ushiro uh, made uh, examples of the uh, reporting systems, but the uh, reporting is co-linked with that uh, enhancement of the quality to some extent, but uh, there is no financial incentives for the phys physicians and the institutions. So. We must be careful about that uh, linking quality with payment. And next is that the home care and the wellness programs coordinations. We previously saw that uh, just medical cares under the healthcare insurance, but the uh, mobile healthcare devices and the other testing, for example, that the DNA testing are useful for adding the health. The last one is that uh, dealing with the patient satisfactions. The US uh, introduced that uh, patient satisfaction for calculating that the qualities under the accountable care, uh, sorry, that the Affordable Care Act, especially the account cap accountable care organization. But uh, this is very difficult to deal with that uh, patient satisfactions for calculations. So, I think that these are the, the hurdles for introducing the accountable cares. And this part is the investing in health. Investing in health is a catchword in the world, especially the EU, US, and Japan. But uh, I found that the very big difference between the Japan and the EU and US. Japan's investing in health is targeting on uncovered services only. It's very interesting for me. But uh, other countries, or the EU and the US, there is no differentiate, dif difference between the uncovered services and covered services for investing in health. So Japan should consider seriously the, what is the meaning of the investing in health. And uh, the, our final goal is sure to assure the 
healthy lives. Ah,、uh, sorry, living long with healthy lives. But、uh, how to promote such kind of、uh, things if we consider only that the uncovered service services areas? That is my concerns about the investing in health. And the、uh, EU and the US both are、uh, both interested in that、uh, preventions for other covered services. This is a very new trend. Previously, that the pre prevention has not been covered, but now the situation is changing. So, Japan has not introduced any prevention preventive services under the national healthcare insurances. But、uh, in the near future, we can cover some kind of the preventive services. And、uh, I talked a lot, but shall we reverse that the first point? As I said to you, that medical innovations mainly many people think that medical product or the therapeutic development, but as Such kind of the development cannot assure that the living long with healthy lives. So we must be careful to promote the living long and healthy lives by introducing the new schemes. I call that the I and the Brookings calls that the it's accountable cares. So technology is just tools, and that the. Delivery reforms is the keys for the futures, especially in Japan's and that the other countries with the aging's needs to change the delivery schemes. And in the aging societies, Japan will face that the more severe situations in 2030s. 37.2 percent people living alone, living alone in 2030s. More than thirty percent of the population will be over sixty-five years old, over thirty trillion yen <coughs> in health expenditures in twenty thirties, and the Ministry of Finance is very concerned about this situation. But the Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare thinks in twenty thirties the population will decrease, especially about the, the elder peoples. So. We can be saved just about the population size, but、uh, I cannot predict any situation in the near future, twenty thirties. So we want to prepare the health delivery schemes reforms. Thank you very much indeed.